live from Augusta. You're watching News 12 at 6 o'clock. A standout former basketball player for Augusta University is dead after a shooting in Washington, D.C. 27-year-old Tyvez Monroe was killed at a metro station early last Tuesday. Police say the suspect was seen talking to Monroe. They even fist bumped before the guy unzips his jacket, pulls out an AR-15, shoots, and kills him. Monroe's family says they are in disbelief. He touched a lot of people. A lot of people loved him. A lot of people looked up to him. He was a mentor to a lot of people. Still no word on a motive, but Monroe's funeral will be on the 13th in Virginia. And our sports director, Dan Booth, is here with us. Dan, during Monroe's time with the Jacks, he really made quite a name for himself. He was a standout. The Augusta Jacks say Monroe definitely made his mark on the court. He scored more than 1,000 points in his career with AU and played a major role in the team winning two Peach Belt regular season titles as well as three Peach Belt conference tournament titles. Monroe is the 24th on the Jaguars' all-time scoring list, 17th in rebounding, 7th in three-pointers made, and 14th in assists. Head coach Dip Mitras tweeted he was sad to hear about Tyvez's untimely passing. He called him, quote, one of the most competitive players I've ever coached, gone too far soon. Now, we spoke with former News 12 sports director Kevin Feigl to reflect on how he remembers Tyvez. And once, once I saw the news that he had gotten, gotten killed, I was like, dang, because some players you do remember, a lot of players you don't. But I did remember Tyvez because of just he was that friendly kind of guy when he was here. And so it kind of it kind of hits a little harder sometimes when you hear something like that. The Jaguars are on the road at USC Buford tonight looking for their eighth win in a row, and I think it's safe to say they'll be playing with heavy hearts. And our thoughts are with them tonight and with his family as well. Just a tragedy. To weather now, after a dreary afternoon, we're expecting some blue skies to break through tomorrow. We have First Alert Chief Meteorologist Riley Hale tracking this rain. So how long is it looking like it's going to stick with us? Uh, that, that's the good news, Laura. Only going to stick around this evening up until around midnight, 10 o'clock. And then closer to midnight, we do start to dry out. Have a look at another system moving in for the weekend in just about 10 minutes. More than a year after a four-year-old boy drowned in Burke County, a new law is in effect in his name, and it could save countless lives. Izzy Scott died on his second day of private swim lessons in June of 2022. The swim instructor didn't notice him at the bottom of the pool in time, and she is now charged with misdemeanor involuntary manslaughter. At the time, Georgia had no laws or safety guidelines for private swim lessons, so his family began fighting for change. Eleven months after Izzy's death, Georgia Governor Brian Kemp signed Izzy's law, and now that we're in the new year, the plan Izzy's law requires must go into effect. Hallie Turner live in our studio. So, Hallie, walk us through what Izzy's law does to protect our kids. Yeah, Laura, the law requires the Department of Health to have a safety plan in place. Swim instructors are required to follow that. It requires all the things that weren't in place when Izzy was in the pool. Haley Edsel is a mom of two active kids under the age of six who love anything with water. But she says Izzy Scott's drowning changed everything for her family. Swim lessons are something that should be saving lives, not... Um, putting them at risk. Before Izzy's drowning, Georgia didn't require a private swim instructor to let parents be present during the lesson. My biggest fear as a parent now knowing how quickly things can happen, like not that it wouldn't even take an instructor being like negligent. If they turn their head for two seconds and you know my kid went under the water or something like that, it happens very fast. Haley says with a five-year-old on the autism spectrum, swim lessons without her around isn't an option. Sometimes it means that his sense of danger is not as strong as it should be. That adds an extra layer of anxiety, which is kind of why I haven't taken the plunge. I'm been a little nervous to do it. As of January 1st of this year, Izzy's law requires the Georgia Department of Public Health to have a model aquatic safety plan for private instructors. We definitely want to help empower parents and families and caregivers to be prevention oriented. At the same time, help those kids get that incredible and important life-saving skill of learning how to swim. It requires student to teacher ratios based off the child's age and skill level. Secondary supervision, like a lifeguard or second swim instructor, but it also requires parent participation, something Haley describes as a relief. It's a huge step in the right direction. I mean, obviously it's is it's going to require a lot of vigilance on instructors part and active parents and stuff but this is one step closer to making sure that there are adequate requirements in place that will add that extra layer of safety for the kids. DPH says at the end of the day this plan is in place for more supervision and less fear of water. 
drowning is different kind of injury mechanism and there's just no coming back from it. Vigilance around the water, supervision, eyeballs on the child all the time, not any place else, is critical. Now, by April 1st, every private instructor is required to have a safety plan in place. And I did ask a DPH about how they follow up on that, and they say that the law doesn't require them to do so. So is there a penalty for safety instructors if it's April 1st and they don't have this plan in place? Well, they say that also the law talks about how there's not one. Okay, so it sounds like it's really incumbent on the parents to Absolutely. check with the they instructors. They must request that before they get back into the water. So they're really relying on them to follow up and do that. Okay, so parents make sure if your kids are getting swim lessons ask for that safety plan especially by April 1st. April 1st yeah. Okay thanks for that Hallie. So Columbia County's longtime Sheriff Clay Whittle faces a new challenger. Patrick Clayton the Richmond County Sheriff's Chief Deputy recently announced he will run as an independent against Whittle in November's election. Sheriff Whittle has held that role for more than 25 years but Clayton says he believes it's time for change. Today Taylor Martin sat down with Patrick Clayton to talk about what he wants to do differently if elected. After 45 years in law enforcement, Patrick Clayton says the job of Columbia County Sheriff is calling his name. But what will change if he wins? I'm going to implement a body-worn camera program right away. The force investigations um, concept, that's out the window. We'll be going to outside agencies for serious use of force investigations. And we're going to be more open and transparent open and transparent those are words he used multiple times in our interview qualities he says the people in columbia county are asking for you gotta at least be out there and your people want to hear from you because that's a big complaint that i've been getting on the campaign trail we don't ever see them you can't call them you can't talk to them you can't go in to meet them he's also heard the negative what feedback did you expect i expect exactly what i'm getting i knew that he's a long time incumbent I knew there's going to be plenty of people that support him, and I respect that. And I, I'm going to tell you there's going to be plenty of people that, that support me as well. And address the feedback on social media. Social media comments show voters are concerned the crime in Richmond County will make its way to Columbia County if you win. What do you have to say about that? That's pretty rich. Um, first of all, if everybody remembers, um, first of all, you can't compare Columbia County and Richmond County as far as crime because we're talking about totally different demographics. And part of my 45 years in policing all across the United States, if you want to figure out where the crime's at, go to the poor areas. At the end of the day, he says he's there to listen. Uh, the ones that are already staunch supporters of my opponent, they're never going to look at me. But I will tell you, if you check with some of the citizens, they're not happy with some of the things that are going on, and they do feel disaffected and they want their voice to be heard and i'm willing to sit down and listen now we're also we're going to set up a time to sit down with sheriff whittle to hear what he has to say after 25 years in that role Renters in our area are feeling price increases hit their wallets now more than ever. New data from the CDC shows the average rent in Augusta has increased by more than 20% in the past year. Cityhood shares what nonprofits here at home are dealing with when it comes to helping those in need. Our housing stock is very, very low on the affordable side. The most significant challenge right now is the percentage of the population that is at risk of homelessness. It's a problem that never seems to go away. Imagine a paper bag full of water. You know it's gonna burst. There's no way it can hold. That is the people at risk of being homeless. Places like the Salvation Army and CSRA Economic Opportunity Authority see it all. The need is always going to outweigh the available funding, regardless of what community you go to because the fact of the matter is that people are always in need. And not only is it a challenge to even find the housing, it's a challenge to pay for housing. To give you a scenario, the average person who receives disability is receiving around 914 a month. There is literally no way that they can afford rent, utilities, and food. The percentage of people that want, truly want that help is growing significantly and they just don't know how to navigate the system and locate the affordable housing. That's what we do. The first step is reaching out for help. In Augusta, Sydney Hood, on your side.
The Salvation Army has caseworkers available. They operate on a case-by-case -case basis. Same with the Marion Barnes Assessment and Referral Center for the homeless. You can go to either of those for help. They'll go through your case with you. And for more information on taking that first step, go to WRDW.com. An indoor pickleball facility officially coming to Columbia County. During last night's meeting, commissioners gave the green light for dinked pickleball to take over the old Final Cut building in Martinez. There will also be a hardware store in the other half of that big space. No opening date is set yet for either business, but we'll keep you posted. When you think of the airport, you probably think of planes. Well, after this break, this week's One Tank Trip highlights an airport that wants to be a destination for family fun. And we are tracking a few showers on our radar network. Stick around for the full forecast just after the break. Time and temp brought to you. But maybe even some thunderstorms and some pretty gusty winds. So Tuesday is what we're keeping our closest eye on. But uh, for the weekend, just watch out for some morning showers early Saturday. I would imagine most of the weekend past then does stay dry. When you think of airports, you think of a destination you can probably fly to, right? Well, in this week's One Tank Trips, Will Volt visited the Greenville Downtown Airport, where they're trying to create a destination worth driving to. Playing by the planes. Here it comes. Taylor Lewis loves bringing her daughter Conley here. To come here and just watch the airplanes, it just fascinates her. The planes constantly fill the sky above Greenville Downtown Airport's Runway Park. After walking through the fuselage at the entrance, you'll be introduced to a mini runway. Just watch out for some morning showers early Saturday. I would imagine most of the weekend past then does stay dry. When you think of airports, you think of a destination you can probably fly to, right? Well, in this week's One Tank Trips, Will Volt visited the Greenville Downtown Airport, where they're trying to create a destination worth driving to. Playing by the planes. Here it comes. Taylor Lewis loves bringing her daughter Conley here. To come here and just watch the airplanes, it just fascinates her. The planes constantly fill the sky above Greenville Downtown Airport's Runway Park. After walking through the fuselage at the entrance, you'll be introduced to a mini... Been ...some thunderstorms and some pretty gusty winds, so Tuesday is what we're keeping our closest eye on. But uh, for the weekend, just watch out for some morning showers early Saturday. I would imagine most of the weekend past then does stay dry. When you think of airports, you think of a destination you can probably fly to, right? Well, in this week's One Tank Trips, Will Volt visited the Greenville Downtown Airport, where they're trying to create a destination worth driving to. Playing by the planes. Here it comes. Taylor Lewis loves bringing her daughter Conley here. To come here and just watch the airplanes, it just fascinates her. The planes constantly fill the sky above Greenville Downtown Airport's Runway Park. After walking through the fuselage at the entrance, you'll be introduced to a mini runway and a whole lot of aviation-themed play areas. This has quickly become one of our favorite spots. Okay, do you see it? It's coming in down that way. One of the big reasons is because the runway is right there. If you love aviation, if you love watching planes take off and land, if you just like being around planes in general, this is the place to be. PR Director Robert Hoover says the airport created this community corridor to inspire kids to love aviation. Besides the park, it also has a military history museum, cafe, and aviation-themed mini-golf course. This last hole, make it, you win a free game, and turn on this old airport oh. beacon. How about that shot by Hoover? A good golfer? <laughs> not, not really, but uh, apparently on camera I do a lot better. When I golf on camera, I struggle. <sighs> Wait a minute. Oh. Oh. Yeah, no surprise, I lose. Ooh, nice. But for Lewis, just having a place like this to take her daughter is a big win. She loves this playground, and we love watching the planes. I mean, you come on a Friday, and they are constantly going, and so it's really fun. In Greenville, Will Volt, on your side. Now that is a great idea, and the Greenville Downtown Airport is just three miles away from Greenville City Center, so you can make a day of it, make a weekend trip of it. The park is open every day, and it's free to go. The rest of it's only open certain days and times, so be sure to check their website before you head over.
In Augusta, millions in opioid settlement money is slowly trickling in. Just ahead, we're breaking down how leaders plan to use it to save lives. And after the dog's historic win over Florida State, one of Georgia's players made a bold prediction about quarterback Carson Beck heading into next season. Find out what it is in sports. First alert group. We are excited to announce that the Medicare Specialist is now 64 Insurance Group. And while we've expanded our portfolio to include other health insurance products, we are still your go-to for all things Medicare. Don't wait until you're 65 to call. Are you 64.com? on these apps. The Irish are people too, apparently. She says it, but I don't think she believes it. Last time you think song got stuck at fourth and dreadful. Any moves? I missed you guys. Ghosts returns part of CBS Premier Week after Super Bowl 58 on CBS and stream on Paramount Plus. Hey, Jill, what's the matter? Man, this is name change. It's stressing me out. Everyone will know we still specialize in Medicare. Yeah, I know that. What about this? Are you 64? Dot com. Fentanyl is Augusta's number one killer for 30 to 50 year olds. That's according to the Georgia Department of Public Health. Richmond County Coroner Mark Bowen says last year 100 people died from opioid overdoses in Augusta with another 85 deaths still pending confirmation. And Mayor Garnett Johnson stated the city address yesterday. He talked about how the city plans to spend hundreds of thousands, some of that already in the bank in opioid settlement money. So Craig, how much money are we talking here and how much do we have? In two settlements over time, more than $7 million is going directly to the city. The mayor says the problem is payments are spread across 18 years, and the hundreds of thousands we do have have to be planned out carefully. The city has almost $700,000 from the settlements, with hundreds of thousands coming in the next 18 years. Dr. Better says some of the most vulnerable victims of this epidemic are those in recovery. If you don't treat the withdrawal, you're going to go right back out to the street and get more drugs to treat your withdrawal. Dr. Better works at the Augustus VA and as director at AU's Addiction Medicine Fellowship Program. He says a solution needs to come soon, which is what Mayor Johnson is pushing for in treatment vending machines. Not only hotel lobbies, but bars, nightclubs, anywhere where someone is perhaps experiencing um, a need for treatment as a result of any of these opioids. Dr. Better says the real solution, however, is long-term care. I think the mayor's idea is a good idea, but it's only a band-aid. I mean, it will prevent some deaths, which is great. But the core is treatment and having the detox facilities. We have seen nothing from the state. We have tried to tap into some of that money, the settlement money that's coming. But with the amount coming by the year, Mayor Johnson says these machines are the best way to create an immediate dent. I don't know if the dollars will flow that far based on the settlement dollars that we're getting, but if they can, if we can make it work, I'm certain and open to having that conversation. Johnson says the soonest they can get something on the agenda is to move forward is sometime after March. In Augusta, Craig Allison, on your side. On your sideline, sports brought to you by the Hawk Law Group. When Carson Beck announced his plans to return to Athens to play one more year for the Georgia Bulldogs, he, it helped the team lock in and give them even more confidence ahead of their historic blowout victory over Florida State. The Dogs, a 60-point win against the Seminoles down in Miami is the largest margin of victory in bowl history. Carson Beck balled out this year, even with most of his offensive weapons missing a lot of time due to injury. To provide context to how highly the dogs think about their starting quarterback after the game running back and wide receiver dylan bell made a bold prediction about beck heading into next season Heisman. i'm telling you he's gonna win the Heisman. i'm telling you we've been talking about this i feel like he's gonna win the Heisman next year for sure and i mean that obviously that's a huge dream of mine so it's something i'll work towards only time will tell, but we can expect to see some new faces around Beck next season because Brock Bowers, Ladd McConkey, Kendall Milton, Dejon Edwards, and Marcus Roseby Jack Saints have all declared for the NFL draft. That's it for sports. We'll be right back after this quick break. And you'll get your money back. 
Well, over the next week, we are going to see a, a several systems approach the CSRA. Uh, we are looking at a wide view at Earth, so they're just going to be coming down the line over the next week or so. So the system that's really worth watching that's going to impact us next Tuesday near Alaska right now. So going to be traveling a good ways before it does reach us. But this system moving through for to this evening and to tonight, nothing more than just some light showers across the area that should come to an end by midnight. We're back to dry weather Thursday and Friday. Rain will start to push in again Friday night and last through at least Saturday morning, but Saturday afternoon does dry out again. Staying dry Sunday, Monday, and then we do see this stronger system show up Thursday. This is the system that's going to bring us a little bit more of a wind threat and potentially even some thunderstorms, so make sure you are keeping it here for those updates next couple of days. For the next couple of days, we got some nice weather. Thursday, Friday, mostly sunny. All right, that'll do it for us. We have more news and weather coming up tonight at 11. CBS Evening News, we focus on solutions, finding solutions to help people understand what are the right choices to make for you and your family.